also reduced the amount of heat shielding, uh, so there's about uh, six feet less heat shielding on the sides, because we don't think that's necessary. Yeah, yeah let's check it out. Yeah. It's kind of like, okay, it doesn't explode. Well, I guess it's... Before Starship Flight 6, SpaceX attempted a bold idea, removing the entire heat shield in one key area. While there were a few concerns about the ship's safety during its re-entry, in fact, the vehicle had a smooth journey, ending up with a graceful landing in the ocean. However, things were not as good as they seemed. Thanks to data from Flight 6, SpaceX has identified a small but serious potential issue for its thermal protection system, compromising Starship's goal of rapid and full reusability. In today's episode, we'll dive into that issue, its consequences, and Elon Musk's new direction for heat shield design. Two weeks after Starship Flight 6, SpaceX conducted to salvage Ship 31's debris and brought them to Australia in preparation for further analysis. During the flight, after separating from Booster 13, Ship 31 followed a similar trajectory to its predecessor, landing vertically in the Indian Ocean. While visual updates on S-31's condition remain scarce, Elon Musk offered some insight via X. Well, the fairing did blow up when the ship fell over after landing in the water, as expected. Despite a seemingly smooth landing, S-31 experienced an explosion. The destruction of the fairing likely resulted from water impact rather than deliberate FTS activation. Among the debris brought back, there is an interesting and classic piece that we all expect the most, star brick. Hundreds of heat shield tiles were divided into multiple bags, many of which are in good condition. SpaceX can research these samples and combine them with the data gathered from the flight for more updates in the future. Frankly, the company has started to focus on testing and developing the thermal protection system in recent tests. Flight 5 witnessed the presence of six aluminum-coated heat shield tiles on the ship's side, and those aluminum tiles melted during re-entry. Fast forward to Flight 6, there was also a change on both sides of the ship where entire sections of heat shield tiles were intentionally left off, including the area where the metallic tiles were installed for Flight 5. The purpose is to study for installing catch-enabling hardware on future vehicles. According to SpaceX's images in the latest flight, the hull had discoloration. Particularly, the metal surface has transitioned to a bluish hue. This suggests that the temperature in the tile-free zones exceeded 600 degrees Celsius, which is also the melting point of aluminum. In fact, color changes are not just thermal discoloration. They are also the result of oxidation. We know that the type of steel that Starship is using is 304L stainless steel, containing high chromium content, 18 to 20 percent nickel, 8 to 12 percent, and extremely low carbon content, less than or equal to 0.03 percent. Under high temperatures, 304L stainless steel reacts with atmospheric oxygen, forming a chromium-rich oxide layer on its surface. This is a natural self-protective mechanism of the steel. The oxide layer acts like a shield, preventing further oxidation from penetrating deeper into the material. Essentially, it provides some degree of protection. Furthermore, the carbon content in steel plays a crucial role in determining its mechanical properties and corrosion resistance. In high-performance steels, particularly those used in corrosive environments, maintaining a low carbon content is essential. When carbon content is kept to an ultra-low level, less than or equal to 0.03%, the precipitation of chromium carbides at grain boundaries is significantly eliminated. This is a critical factor in maintaining the steel's corrosion resistance. In Flight 6, SpaceX aimed to let Starship suffer the higher peak heating, steeper re-entry, with prolonged exposure to extreme heat. Indeed, during re-entry, temperatures reached approximately 650 degrees Celsius, at which point the cold-rolled stainless steel structure began to lose its durability. Cold rolling enhances the strength of steel, but the high temperatures encountered can compromise material integrity. Upon splashing down, Starship faced a thermal shock effect. 
This occurs when a material at high temperatures is suddenly cooled, such as when exposed to seawater, creating a massive temperature gradient between the surface and core. The rapid contraction of the surface while the core remains hot leads to substantial internal stresses, which can result in structural failure if not properly managed. The rapid cooling techniques used in metallurgy to harden steel can enhance its strength, but often come at the cost of ductility, making the material more brittle. For S31, in addition to thermal stresses, the mechanical forces from the impact during splashdown compound these challenges. The sudden deceleration upon hitting the water generates significant forces that can exacerbate any pre-existing weaknesses in the material particularly if it has already been compromised by thermal effects. Although Starship is meant to land on chopsticks, not in the ocean, with the current heat shield configuration, the ship can survive a single flight, but it would be very difficult to refly. Reinforcing the thermal protection on the sides is absolutely necessary. Hopefully, SpaceX will find a new solution to solve this problem in the next test flights. Anyway, currently they have made some progress with its system. As you know, the persistent problem with heat shields is that they often come off. This used to be a headache issue for NASA in its space shuttle era, reflected in a number of incidents including Atlantis and Columbia. For that reason, to achieve the rapid turnaround times Elon Musk envisions for Starship, TPS should be carefully reinforced at the beginning. SpaceX is currently developing a new generation of heat shield tiles for the Starship spacecraft, which feature a hybrid design that incorporates both standard size tiles and significantly smaller ones. The firm is using both standard size tiles and smaller ones in different areas of the spacecraft. This innovation allows for greater flexibility in tile placement across the spacecraft's surface. This design can optimize thermal protection in various areas, particularly where heat exposure is most intense during re-entry. The new tiles are reportedly twice as strong as their predecessors, reducing the likelihood of cracking or detachment during flight. This improvement is crucial for maintaining the integrity of the heat shield, especially under extreme conditions encountered during re-entry. Beneath the primary heat shield tiles, SpaceX plans to incorporate an ablative layer that provides additional thermal protection. This layer chars and burns away during re-entry, insulating the underlying structure from extreme heat while also offering a backup in case of tile failure. But not stopping there, recently, Elon Musk revealed a groundbreaking shift in their heat shield design approach. Metallic shielding, supplemented by eulage gas or liquid film cooling, is back on the table as a possibility. This signals SpaceX's willingness to explore hybrid approaches, combining metallic and ceramic solutions to achieve superior heat resistance and durability. The goal is to create a heat shield system that can endure higher temperatures while maintaining an optimal mass for interplanetary missions. Nevertheless, this is not the first time this solution has come to his mind which explains why he said, back on the table. Nearly five years ago, SpaceX tested metallic heat shield technology. This isn't a new idea, but rather the revival of an ambitious early concept. At its core, this is a transpirational cooling system. The windward side of SpaceX's Starship, which faces intense airflow during re-entry, features a sophisticated two-layer sandwich structure designed to manage the extreme thermal conditions encountered in the atmosphere. Between the two layers lies a gap filled with a cooling liquid, such as water or liquid methane. This liquid plays a critical role in regulating temperatures. As the spacecraft re-enters the atmosphere and encounters extreme heat, the cooling liquid absorbs excess thermal energy preventing it from reaching the inner structure. In addition, the cooling system can be designed to circulate the liquid, enhancing its ability to dissipate heat and maintain optimal temperatures throughout the re-entry process. The outer surface of the windward side is perforated with millions of microscopic holes. These perforations serve multiple purposes. The working principle behind this system looks much like sweat escaping through the pores on human skin. 
When the spacecraft re-enters the atmosphere and the surface temperature skyrockets, the liquid stored in the cavity is drawn out through these microscopic holes. As the liquid evaporates, it not only cools the metal surface, but also creates a capillary effect, pulling more liquid from within, forming a continuous cooling cycle. Effective thermal management contributes to SpaceX's goal of rapid reusability for Starship. By minimizing wear and tear on critical components during re-entry, maintenance requirements between flights can be reduced. Traditional heat shields often lose some of their material during re-entry, requiring repairs or replacements. In contrast, this active cooling system only consumes the cooling liquid. The underlying metal structure remains intact, and in theory, preparing for the next flight would simply involve refilling the cooling fluid tank. So have you ever wondered what the coolant in this system is? Is either water or liquid methane? Elon Musk weighed in on this critical choice, stating, when going to roughly 1750 Kelvin, specific heat is more important than the latent heat of vaporization, which is why cryogenic fuel is a slightly better choice than water. Yep, methane is the winner. The reason is very simple. During re-entry, SpaceX's Starship faces extreme external temperatures that can reach up to 1,500 degrees Celsius. To manage this heat, the spacecraft employs innovative cooling techniques, including the use of water as a cooling fluid. This approach can lead to a surprising phenomenon known as snap freeze which occurs under specific conditions. Snap freeze refers to the rapid transition of water from a liquid state to solid ice, often occurring when water is in a supercooled state. This process is well documented and involves several physical principles. When water evaporates at an extremely rapid rate, it absorbs a massive amount of heat from its surroundings. This is the latent heat of vaporization. The heat absorption is so intense that it can cause the remaining water to cool suddenly, freezing almost instantly. In the harsh conditions of space, especially within the narrow cooling channels of the heat shield, this can result in severe blockages, disrupting the entire cooling system. However, liquid methane is not also a perfect option. At high temperatures, the hydrocarbon molecules in methane can undergo a process called coking where carbon atoms begin to bind together, forming solid deposits. These carbon buildups can also lead to blockages, compromising the efficiency of the cooling system. Anyway, each option offers unique benefits and challenges. Selecting methane for this case manifests SpaceX's careful and meticulous calculation. Flight 6 is truly a very important leap forward, laying the groundwork for their ultimate goal the journey to Mars with the upgrades on the heat shield system. Just before Flight 6, SpaceX unveiled a groundbreaking step in heat shield development, tweeting, We recently tested heat shield materials in a simulated Martian atmosphere as we aim to launch the first starships to Mars in 2026. This announcement was accompanied by images of heat shield testing and further detailed in the Flight 6 livestream offering a glimpse into the cutting-edge research that is shaping the future of space travel. In the video, a circular sample of heat shield material was placed in a specialized thermal chamber to simulate the extreme conditions of re-entry. Using a flame generator, SpaceX replicated temperatures ranging from 1,400 to over 1,650 degrees Celsius, 2,552 to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit flames transitioned from blue to purple, visually indicating the intensity of the heat. The material began to crack and melt as the test progressed, offering valuable data on its performance under extreme stress. These controlled failures are a key part of SpaceX's process, as they help engineers identify weaknesses and push the limits of the technology. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.